Bonjour et bienvenue à Echabi cette semaine. My name is Chris Hussey, I'm English. I am welcome to Echabi. This week we are going to talk about corks and not the cork spare all taste you're going to find in bottles. Just the way to close a bottle. See you in a minute. Hi and welcome to Echabi, I hope you had a wonderful week, a beautiful weekend and we're here for the Q&A. That is Echabi or myself on uh, answering to your wine questions every week and today we've got a question from Pierre who's asking, I've just read uh, this article with a link and this article is actually about cork and I was wondering if there is a particular rule or law for corks in Chablis as in the article we're talking about Burgundy maybe Chablis is already seduced by that idea well Pierre let me just explain what the article is about this article is about a new type of cork called the Am it's actually not really new it's been around for some years but they're just launching a new origin cork with I think it's beeswax Go figure, it's probably working really well. And in this article, they're actually saying that there is this kind of trend to come back to normal corks or damn corks. So what is it all about? Well, indeed, I can tell you just by personal experience with all the bottles I would open at a Chablis that Diam is getting bigger, that this Corks, which are actually corks that are treated to prevent TCA, which are the reason for the cork smells and tastes in wine. Those corks are getting really big and are used in the Chablis region and in Burgundy quite a lot. Just for you, this morning I actually counted the number of bottles I would open with normal, probably plastic silicone ones, and then the diam ones and diam corks are really getting big i would assume they're around here at echabli amongst my suppliers which is not the figure for all burgundy around 50 55 maybe 60 percent of what i get so that's a big share now there are different ways to actually close a bottle and different reason why you're going to use this or that type of closure first one is actually the normal traditional cork which is a piece of cork. Thing is, it can be different lengths, different width, it can be different qualities. So depending on what wine you make or what kind of wine you want to make or what kind of wine grower you are, you're going to choose to invest maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. And that is going to have an impact on the quality of wine. And you know, at some point you might have a problem with corkage. The other type is the Diam one, which is actually cork that's been really shaped into a uh, cork and this cork has been treated so you don't have the taste or smell of cork. Again, they're getting big. Then you've got the silicone one. Silicone has had a really bad press over the years and it is considered in France and probably only in France to be for cheaper kind of wines. The same goes for screw caps, screw tops, where it is in France and again I'm only talking about France considered as a good use for cheaper wines. Now on those two styles of closure, i.e. the silicone ones and the screw tops, they are indeed only in France seen as not really good or not really high level. But keep in mind that one of my most expensive premier cru and one of my most expensive grand cru in Chablis were actually closed with screw tops. Because I accepted it and because I know that I can actually value that kind of thing because it's actually very sane you won't have any corkage and on a bottle that's going to be 100 150 euros you need to reassure customers so obviously french customers were like oh no not maybe that but any other customer would be you know i'm really happy to have that so that's another important information another thing about silicone and screw tops if you are making low sulfites or no sulfites wine, it tends to be a very good idea to go towards those. Now, I'm not just inventing that. Uh, you know, I'm not the most technical person on earth. But after with people who actually are making wine or labs, and they tell you whenever we try and we do wines with low SO2, 
uh, with low sulfites, we tend to go towards those because the exchange with air is lower. So I know I'm actually right now making friends with that saying because even those labs wouldn't tell their customers who are wine growers to do so because again, screw caps and uh, silicone are not seen as really valuable. So that brings me to a question about the market. Of course, in France, we want, we like traditional noise. We want, we like traditional gesture of opening a bottle where it's not as important somewhere else in the world. So in France, you might find normal or tian corks because they look, the tian ones, they look like normal corks and probably less silicon and screw tops. Another one I haven't talked about is the glass corks, glass tops, glass closures, which are called Vinolock. Uh, I'm afraid I don't have that long an experience with those corks as they're not really used for now in Chabit. They're just Actually, they're actually used but for marketing purposes when the bottle is open and you can put that tiny piece of glass on top and it's gonna close the wine for another couple of days. So there you go, when you choose closure, when you choose your type of cork, it's gonna be based on the style of wine you want to do and that's just the technical aspect. You need to close the wine and you want it to age in a way or another and then you are making marketing choices. And according to the markets you're talking to, you're going to make, again, different choices. Diam, anyway, is getting quite big. Again, I will give you more insight on their new, I'm going to call that Origin Corks, uh, Origin Diam, uh, with, I think it's beeswax. Again, I will have to check. Pierre, I hope that answers your question. If on your side you've got more questions about wine, about techniques, about tasting, about business, send them over, I will make a choice every week and answer with a video, probably on Mondays. Hmm, makes sense. I hope you're gonna have a wonderful week. Remember, you can follow Shabby on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I hope you're gonna have a wonderfully warm week with plenty of sun. And don't forget, keep on tasting. Bye-bye.